In this video, we'll be looking at an emergency department model uh, where we have a uh, sign-in area, a registration area, uh, exam rooms, trauma rooms, treatment rooms, and four different uh, patient types. This is actually an example from the Simio and Simulation textbook, and it's model 9.1, or the model we're going to build is based on uh, model 9.1 and our focus in this in this module is on user-defined statistics so for this model we'll look at tally statistics uh, state statistics output statistics and also we will uh, have a look at uh, an application of secondary resources so for the emergency department model uh, there are four different patient types as you see here there are routine patients moderate uh, severe and trauma patients and they all follow a different uh, path the routine patients go through the registration process uh, and examination and then they leave. Moderate and severe patients both uh, go from registration to exam to a treatment room and then they leave. And trauma patients come uh, to go directly to a trauma room uh, and then they go to treatment and then they leave. And we have different priorities as you would expect for each one of our patient types with the trauma patients being the highest priority, the severe patients being second uh, highest, followed by moderate and routine patients. Another interesting aspect of this model is that when the patients are in the uh, in the exam or treatment or trauma room, they need the medical resources or the medical personnel to um, uh, to provide the medical services. And so in the exam room, uh, it can be done by either a doctor or a nurse with the doctor having preference. In the treatment room, uh, you need both a doctor and a nurse. And in the trauma room, you need a doctor and either a nurse or doctor. So you need two and you would prefer having the nurse with the doctor. What we're interested in are resource requirements, and this is directly um, affects the cost of a design. And so we have two different types of resources. We have the room resources, uh, the exam room, treatment room, and trauma room. And then we have the medical staff, the doctors and nurses. And so as what happens is when a patient arrives, uh, let's say a severe patient arrives and goes through registration, they first need access to an exam room. So there's a resource modeling the exam room and it has a capacity and then you need the uh, doctor or nurse resource to um, perform the exam and so they're two different this is this uh, application of a secondary resource similarly in the treatment room then you the patient needs to first uh, ha have access to the treatment room and then uh, have access to both a doctor and a nurse and our interest or our performance metrics that we're interested in uh, in addition to the cost is the patient waiting time and so in particular we're interested in the waiting time that a, that a patient spends before seeing the doctor so from the time they arrive until they see uh, their first uh, medical professional is is one of the metrics that we're interested in and instead of building the model from scratch this time we're going to start with a baseline model where I've just already built um, uh, the, the components that we've already seen in previous modules, the, the, the methodology that we've seen in previous modules. One thing I didn't mention in the previous slide is that all of the arriving patients go through a sign-in process. So everybody comes, uh, arrives in the door, they go through a sign-in process, and that's really where the, the designation is made as to whether they're uh, routine, trauma, uh, severe, or moderate. And so as you can see from my model, my baseline model, I have four different um, instances of model entity and I've chosen a different uh, color for each symbol for the entity. I have a source object and I create uh, patients uh, uh, entities and I have a table reference uh, for arriving patients. So I have a patient type, uh, a priority, and the patient mix as we've seen before and the related table, the treatments table, gives the um, the sequence, the routing sequence that the entities follow. So for example, a routine patient uh, comes to sign in and the service time is two minutes, uh, goes from sign in to registration and the service time is uh, random uniform uh, three seven, goes to an exam room uh, where the uh, time is uh, triangular five ten fifteen, and finally this is then routed to the exit. And so if we look at the treatment table, you can see that the uh, the other uh, 
uh, uh, sequences that I mentioned earlier uh, are implemented here also. So we have the routine patients, the moderate patients, the severe patients, and the um, the um, urgent patients, which I guess we I call trauma patients earlier. And the uh, times vary for uh, each one of the patient types. And so when we go back in our model, we can see that uh, the uh, all of the entities that arrive at the source go to sign in, and then the service time from the table, from the data table, service time uh, is our reference property for processing time. And so this is what lets us use uh, specify the processing time by entity type in the uh, sequences table. Finally, the other thing that we've seen before is the use of the by sequence um, destination type. And so patients that come out of the um, uh, out of the sign in will be routed by their corresponding sequence. And so as you see, what we have in our sample model or in our the initial model that we'll start with, uh, we've seen all of this before, where we have different entity instances, we use different symbols, we use uh, two different data tables, one that is attached to the source, so we have uh, a reference assignment before creating the entities, and then we use that reference assignment here to determine entity type, and then we route by sequence, and then we also use the uh, the um, related table to extract the service time. One other thing that we have is uh, I implemented the priority. You can see that all of our um, all of the resources or all of the servers I mean uh, have a ranking rule of largest value first by, by priority. So registration, uh, exam room, uh, so on. Uh, and the priority is specified as routine, moderate, severe, urgent. And so, in fact, the urgent patients are what I had mentioned as trauma patients earlier that have the highest priority. One final thing to point out about our baseline model is that the exam room, trauma room, treatment room capacities are all set using um, reference property. Because as I would mentioned in the introduction, the uh, determining the capacity of the resource is one of our primary objectives. And so you can see on my model properties, my model properties, I have the exam treatment trauma capacity uh, reference uh, properties. I also have a doctor capacity and a nurse capacity. Uh, those are our secondary resources that we haven't yet implemented. So let's have a look at how we do that uh, now. So basically when uh, the patient arrives, uh, it's sampled as the uh, type of patient and then they go through the, the sequence uh, as specified in the in the treatment table. And what we want to do is when a a patient arrives at an exam room, we want to then implement a secondary resource that you need either a doctor or a nurse. So we're going to do that using the resource um, object. So I'm going to put two uh, instances. The first one is going to be named uh, doctors and the second one will be named nurses. Let's just name it doctor and nurse then. We don't need the S. So now I have two resources uh, that uh, represent the doctor and nurses in our clinic. And so I'm going to then specify the initial capacity as the reference property that I had previously defined as doctor capacity and nurse capacity. And so now we have the resources and we need to seize and release the resources uh, as required by the process. So when we go to the exam room as we want the, the system to behave is we want to be able to specify how many exam rooms we have and when a patient arrives at the exam room they then request the doctor or nurse. So there are two separate resources, one for the room and one for the doctor or nurse. So we're going to do that using add-on processes that we saw in the uh, previous module. And what we want to do is before processing, when I look at the before processing add-on process, it says this occurs when an entity has been allocated server capacity but before entering uh, its processing station. So this happens after the, uh, the patient has access to the room. And so we're going to create a process and what we will do is seize the doctor or nurse resource. So as specified in our in our problem definition for the exam room, 
the medical resource can be the doctor or the nurse with the doctor preferred. So we'll implement that by using uh, a list. So I need to go back to my model, uh, definitions, list, and create a list uh, that includes the doctor and nurse resource. So I'm going to call the uh, list, my list was going to be a uh, object list, and let's name our object list doctor nurse and we'll place the objects in the list in the order of preference so I'm gonna have the doctor resource first and the nurse uh, where's the nurse here it is nurse resource second so we have a list named doctor nurse and that list contains two uh, two objects and so we go back to our process and we want to seize so we will seize uh, and open the repeat group editor and add an object name. We don't want to select a specific object, we want to select from a list. And the list we want to use, of course, is the, the list that we just created, Dr. Nurse. And then we can look at the advanced options and it will give a selection goal. And so our selection goal is preferred order, which essentially means if both are available, go in preference, go in the preferred order, the order in which they're placed in the list. And that's why when we created the list, we used uh, doctors first and nurses second, so that we could uh, give preference to the doctor. Now, if we look ahead to the trauma, uh, in the trauma rooms, we can see we're gonna have to do a secondary C's here. This time we want the nurse preferred. And so while we're creating lists, we'll go ahead and create the, um, uh, create the second list uh, to support that uh, second criteria. So let's go create another object list and this time we'll call this nurse doctor. And in the nurse doctor list we will just invert the order. So we're first going to have nurse and second we're going to have doctor. Let me get rid of this. Doctor. So now we have two lists. Both of them include our two medical resources. The doctor nurse list has the doctor first and the nurse second. The nurse doctor list has the nurse first and the doctor second. And so using those lists in conjunction with the, uh, the um, uh, C step, and in particular the uh, selection goal from the C step, we can seize from the list in the preferred order. So back to our model in the exam room, we now need to specify when we release the, um, uh, when we uh, release the secondary resource. And so if we look at after processing, this occurs when an entity has completed the processing time and is about to uh, attempt its exit. So in after processing, we're going to release. And when we uh, select, we're going to uh, release the object that we seized. So our object list was, in this case, doctor nurse. So I seize the uh, doctor or nurse resource when the entity arrives and has access to the room, and I release the resource uh, when the entity, uh, when the patient leaves. And so now we need to do the same thing for the trauma rooms and the treatment rooms. And so we go to treatment room and we do an add-on process, and we'll do that for before processing. And what we're going to do here is seize, if we look at our statement in the treatment room, we need a doctor and a nurse. So we need both for the, um, uh, for the treatment. So we go back and this time I'm going to seize both the doctor. So I will seize the specific resource doctor and the specific resource nurse. And similarly, when I finish treatment, I will have the add-on process for after processing, and I will release both of those. So we will go to release, and we'll release the nurse, and release the doctor. And finally, in the trauma room, we need to do the same thing. So we will create the add-on processes. So here's, oops, there's our trauma room. 
and scroll down to add-on processes and we want to do before processing and here we will seize and now we need to seize two things the first thing that we're going to seize is from our nurse doctor list so we will seize from a list and we'll use nurse doctor because we want the preferred order to be nurse first doctor second and then we'll seize from the doctor resource. So we arrive and we seize from the, the nurse doctor list which gives preference to the nurse and then we seize the doctor. And then finally when we depart or when they finish processing uh, in the um, trauma room we will release. So we'll go and release and the first thing that we're going to release is the uh, from the list nurse doctor and then we'll release the doctor okay so now our basic model is complete and if we run you can see I have my uh, runtime set uh, initially for 10 days and we can see the arriving entities and you can see by the symbol color uh, whether they're routine severe moderate or or urgent and you can see them moving through the um, uh, moving through the facility and as we just defined when they go through exam trauma and treatment rooms the doctor and nurse resources are also constraining entity flow just as the uh, rooms we also have defined reference properties for each one of our resources. So we have doctor, exam, treatment, trauma, and nurse, and we can adjust the capacity to uh, support experimentation. And so if we just go to an, uh, an experiment that we just created, uh, we see as we would expect the controls for the capacity. So in the subsequent video, uh, the next video that we do, uh, if we run to fast forward mode again, we can um, uh, look at the results uh, and so on as we usually uh, can and in the next video we will look at how we can define user uh, define statistics to measure the specific uh, metrics of interest to us which primarily are waiting time for the patients so when a patient arrives how long do they have to wait before they see a medical professional and secondly uh, tracking the configuration cost which is going to be a function of the uh, resources used uh, and also the waiting time of the patients